the futuristic and world record breaking China's flying railway project. Is China currently the undisputed king of mega projects? Well, it's hard to dispute that fact, looking at the ambitious projects they have been launching lately. In August this past year, the country announced that within a year, it would start a feasibility study for the ambitious Tibet Nepal railway project. The proposed 170 kilometer railway, part of the Belt and Road Initiative, or simply BRI, will link Karung and South Tibet to Nepal's capital, Kathmandu, entering Nepal and Rasuan district. The plan is to eventually extend the railway to India. So what else do we know about this project? Stick around to find out. The Nepal-China Railway Plans As early as 1973, Mao Zedong, the influential Chinese leader and the founder of China's Republic of China, proposed a connection between the two countries to King Burendra of Nepal in Beijing. Then in 2006, the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the first railway into Tibet was completed. The same year, the then chairman of Tibet Autonomous Region, King Ba Pungkong, told the former Prime Minister of Nepal, Kagda Prasad Oli, then Deputy Prime Minister, that the railway would be extended to Shigatse and eventually to the China-Nepal border. In 2016, during Oli's visit to China, the two countries signed a treaty on trade and transit, including a plan to build a high-speed railway from Kathmandu to the Chinese border. In June 2018, Nepal and China agreed on the construction of the railway as a component of a series of cooperation projects approved by the two sides. A mutual agreement over the pre-feasibility study was reached in August 2018. The railway has been viewed as a way to reduce Nepal's dependence on India, which was made apparent during the 2015 Nepal blockade. According to a new railway plan revealed by the Tibet Autonomous Region Government, the rail line will operate near the line of actual control and through the disputed Aksai Chin region. Tibet's medium to long-term railway plan will help expand the Tar Rail network to 4,000 kilometers by 2025 from the current 1,400 kilometers. The project will cover new routes that will continue up to China's borders with India and Nepal. Designed to start in Shigatse, Tibet, the proposed rail line will run northwest along the Nepal border before piercing north via Aksai Chin and ending in Hotan, Xinjiang. The planned route will travel through Rutog and around Pangong Lake on the Chinese side of the Line of Control, LAC. The first section from Shigatse to Pakhukso is anticipated to be completed by 2025, while the remaining the remaining line section concluding at Hotan is expected to be completed by 2035. A state media report citing the plan revealed by the Tar Development and Reform Commission stated, By 2025, the construction of several railway projects, including the Yang Ning Chi section of the Sichuan Tibet Railway, the Shigatse Pakutso section of the Xinjiang Tibet Railway, and the Bomi Rayuk section of the Yunnan Tibet Railway will all see major progress. The cost. The project is expected to cost upward of $5.5 billion and is equal to the entire annual state revenue of Nepal. And although only one third of the total length of the tracks would fall on the Nepal side, this stretch would account for almost half of the costs due to the difficult geology and climate. According to engineers who worked as consultants at the Chinese Department of Railways until 2019, the feasibility study will do two important things. First, it will determine the route, including ground and bridge proportion. The second will be the type of railway that needs to be built, high speed or low. Experts say the feasibility study could be a defining move for the Tibet-Nepal railway, which has been on hold for years with Nepal reluctant to pay for the study and China reticent about funding it. In late 2018, China prepared a pre-feasibility study of the railway for Nepal and estimated the total cost of the 72.5 kilometer section in Nepal at $2.75 billion. The report, which is not yet publicly available, suggested it was an extremely difficult project because of the terrain gradient, but not impossible. Technically, this will be one of the world's most difficult feats of railway engineering, since it needs to descend from 4,500 meters on the Tibetan Plateau and cut through the Himalayas to Kathmandu at 1,200 meters. But the good thing is, China has the technological prowess, and therefore, it is possible, as they have already built railways at even higher altitudes in Tibet. The 2018 pre-feasibility study was carried out by a Chinese team since Nepal lacks expertise in railway engineering, and the same is expected with the feasibility study. However, some worry about Nepal's lack of ability to even review technical reports as it does not have railway engineers. The department established a decade ago is dominated by road engineers and runs only a 52-kilometer railway line in the plains connecting Bijapur and Jangapur to the Indian border and built with Indian assistance. In 2018, the same year as the pre-feasibility study, the Nepal Department of Railways and China Railway signed a cooperation agreement. However, the foreign ministry did not inform the Department of Railways about any developments during China's foreign minister's visit in March the same year, 
and Nepal's foreign minister's visit in August. The challenges. Besides the geological challenges, there are also geopolitical hurdles. India has been suspicious about the China-Nepal railway. Unlike Nepal, India is not a BRI signatory, and Sino-Indian relations are strained over their border disputes. Former Ambassador Q wrote in 2020, it is both China and Nepal's responsibility to convince India on the railway's importance to link India and China and its mutual benefit for the region, as Nepal links mainland China and the South Asian subcontinent. So, if we can connect China's railway network with India's railway network, then this could be an important transit point for the region. In recent months, the cross-border railway project has been covered by Chinese media and elicited responses on Weibo, a social media platform dominant in the region. It has been cited as an important geopolitical project for China. A commentary piece published by Kaijing Magazine's WeChat channel suggested that a rail link through Nepal to India could both enhance China-India economic bonds when geopolitical tensions are at ease and increase China's strategic maneuvering space when tensions are on the rise. But there is still hope that all involved parties will come to a mutual agreement. Ecological impact. The ecological impact of the proposed rail line is not being discussed in Nepal, and nothing has been said about what China's 2021 Green Development Guidelines might mean for the project. Some experts say this is due to the Nepal government's inability to work with the Chinese team. Experts insinuate that any trans-Himalayan project of this scale will have a serious environmental impact, and there should be more concern about the fragile geology of the region. They add that the project also needs to factor in seismic risk, since the track will pass through the main central thrust a geologically weak zone in the Himalayas. Experts insist that it is crucial to use the technical knowledge of geologists and other experts to minimize its environmental impact. Still, no efforts towards this have been made so far. In fact, there have been some concerns in China over the ecological impact of the railway, says one comment on Kaijing Magazine's WeChat channel. At a time when we are enduring extreme heat, many are concerned with the railway's ecological impact on the world's water tower. Railway maintenance is going to be very challenging in the Himalayan region. International relationships also depend on how we choose to act. Be cautious. Nepal has a huge trade deficit with China, and Beijing is encouraging Nepal to export more to China. From the 1st of September this past year, 98% of Nepali products became eligible for zero-tariff exports to China. For now, the only functional Nepal-China cross-border road crossing in Rasuagadi, northwest of Kathmandu, had been closed since the COVID-19 pandemic and was only partially opened last year after the visit to Nepal by Li Zhangshu, chair of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress of China. The Economic Impact the proposed railway would give Nepal, dependent on India for access to the sea, the ability to reach global markets through China's advanced logistics networks and weaken New Delhi's hold on it. Nepal and India are bound by strong cultural and religious ties. India is also Nepal's largest trade partner, accounting for roughly 70% of both its imports and exports. But India has often behaved more like a bully than a big brother. Since the 1980s, India has blockaded Nepal three times. An Indian blockade in 1989 was motivated in part by fears over Nepal's growing closeness to China. And in 2015, after a catastrophic earthquake in Nepal, India blockaded Nepal once again to influence its domestic politics. India also constrains Nepal's access to global markets. Take, for example, the case of black cardamom, one of Nepal's primary exports. It's consumed in large quantities in Pakistan. But India doesn't allow Nepali exporters to access Pakistan through a direct overland route via the region of Punjab. Nepali black cardamom must be offloaded at the Kolkata port and shipped to Karachi via sea, a route that takes double the time. Indian traders re-export Nepali black cardamom to Pakistan, often mixing it with inferior grades of Indian black cardamom, grabbing more profits. The China-Nepal railway would break India's economic dominance over Nepal enabling Nepali exporters to use Chinese transshipment routes to global markets. It could also open up access to China's domestic consumer market. For China, a railway connection to Nepal would also have strategic value. India fears the Nepal line could be extended to Lumbini, near the border with India, though the Director General of Nepal's Department of Railways says there are no plans at the moment to study such a project. If completed, the China-Nepal railway would broaden China's physical connectivity around India and advance it as a power in South Asia. And while the rail line would provide Nepal with some economic benefits, they're simply not enough to generate the necessary revenue for operating and maintaining the line and repaying a Chinese loan. Infrastructure financing for poor countries like Nepal is typically done through grants and concessional financing, and Nepal may struggle to repay even an interest-free loan of that size, especially since the line's operational costs would also require heavy subsidies. Ultimately, the project is massive and would benefit both China and Nepal in the long run. As to when exactly the project will commence, 
recommends, that remains to be seen. And that's it from us today. If you would like to watch more of such amazing content, be sure to subscribe to our channel, give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. Until next time, thank you for watching.